Hello there everyone, so today I would like to talk to you about the fundamental theorem of calculus. So first assume that f of x is a function and well lowercase f of x is its derivative. So this would be capital F of x would be the anti-derivative which is the inverse process of the derivative. In the last few lessons, we discussed a few examples. So, for example, x squared. When you take the derivative, um, you get 2x. So, if you have something like x, when you try to get the antiderivative, you will increase the exponent here by 1 and also divide by that number. Right? So, what the theorem of calculus says is that if you have a definite integral, of f of x dx that is going to be the antiderivative at point b minus the antiderivative at point a and this result will be the area of your function in this way parts of the graph which are above your x line will be considered positive areas of the graph which are under the line will be considered negative. You don't have to worry about turning those signs because when you calculate the integral it will give you a negative value. So what happens is if you take the integral through this whole function here from this first point up to this one all areas which are above will be added up and all areas which are below will be subtracted. So at the end, you will get those areas minus the area underneath. If your whole function is above the x line, then everything will be positive. So in this example here now, from point A to B, if we take the integral, it would, gives us, it would give us this area here. And that would be all positive. So let's take a look at some numeric examples now. So let's say that we want to calculate the area under the curve x to the power of 3 in the interval between 1 and 3. So using the fundamental theorem of calculus we could just say that the area under that curve would be the integral from 1 to 3 of x to the power of 3 dx. Now you need to find the antiderivative of that function. So if your function is x cubed, your antiderivative um, would be something x to the power 4, because when you take the derivative, that's going to drop to um, 3. So think of this. You would need something x to the power 4. So when you take the derivative, it would turn into x to the power of 3 for example and then you have the 4 multiplying there. Now since your function is only x to the power of 3 you need to get rid of this 4 so you divide on the other side by 4. So if the derivative of x to the power of 4 over 4 is x to the power of 3 then that's the antiderivative. This is our f capital F of x, this is our lower case f of x. Obviously, you can apply a more general rule. Um, for example, if you have your x of n, if you take the, the antiderivative, obviously, this is going to be n plus 1 times x to the power of, sorry, x to the power of n plus 1 over n plus 1. If this is your function, that's going to be your derivative. But we'll discuss more of those rules with time. Right now, we're just worrying about that um, particular area. So, so this is our antiderivative. So how would this area work out? Well, it would be f of 3, the antiderivative, at point 3 minus f of 1 the antiderivative at point 1. 
Now, as we have found, the antiderivative for x to the power 3 is x to the power 4 over 4. So this will be 3 to the power 4 over 4 minus, well, because this is f of 3, right? And 1 to the power 4 over 4, which is f of 1. If we work those values, um, 3 to the power of 4 and 1 to the power of 4, 1 to the power of 4 is 1. Everything is under 4. So we can write this as a single fraction because they have the same denominator. Now this is basically 9 squared, so that's 81 minus 1. So 81 minus 1, that's 80 divided by 4. So the area would then be 80 by 4, which is 20 units. If there were some units in your graph, if this is like displacement or something, then you could work some variation with time, but not in this case. If nothing is said, then just units. So if we take our calculator and we put our cubic function here, x to the power of 3, we may draw it. Now, our function is a bit too small. We may adjust the vertical window here, uh, the view window. So let's just readjust those values. Since my x is only going from 1 to 3, that's my interval, I will set x minus 1 and x max as 3. I do not, do not expect any negative values to be there, as we have just analyzed in our function before. Now, why min equals negative 30? Since I'll have no negative values, that's a bit um, too much. I'll just put negative 1 so I can see the x's. And let's leave max as 30, as we expect 3 to the power of 3 to be 27. So let's draw it again. And there we go. Look at our nice slope. So the area under that slope is um, 20 units. Now, what if we wanted to compare uh, with the area of a triangle, right? It would be quite far, but it shouldn't be, I mean, it should be reasonably, be reasonably far. So how would this area turn out to be? So we have found this area to be 20 units. If we discretize this, using a triangle, um, my question is how far would we be from that value? So with that shape, we may split this into a triangle. Um, this base here, since this is one and this is three, this length will be two. This height here is one. This other one, since this point is 27, this will be 26. So what we have to do here is calculate the area of a rectangle, 2 times 1, plus the area of this triangle up here, 2 times 26 divided by 2. So we would get our area to be 28 units. So that means that this portion here, for example, is 8 units. Since we have calculated everything here to be 28, and this portion down here is 20. Now let's take a look at another example of the application of the fundamental theorem of calculus. Now let's make things just slightly more complicated. Now I'm mixing some power function with some trigonometric function. And let's look for the antiderivatives because when we're working with the sum of two functions, we can take the antiderivative of each of them and do it separately. So the antiderivative of x to the power 4, as we have seen, this is a power function, so x to the power of n, it would be x to the power of n plus 1 over n plus 1. Right? You can always do the derivative, and then you find that you're going to drop n plus 1, it becomes n, and then you can cross out those on top and below, and then you get back to x to the power of n. Now, sine of x, when we take the derivative of sine, we get cosine. When we take the derivative of cosine, we get negative sine. 
So the integral of sine will have to be negative cosine. Because when we take the derivative of negative cosine, we would get sine. So the area under the curve for that function, and notice that I don't even care how is the shape of that function. I'm able to calculate the area not knowing that. Um, let's say that we're only going from 0 to 1. Okay, so x here is between 0 and 1. So our definite integral from 0 to 1 of x to the power 4 plus sine of x dx. Now this dx actually is multiplying everything inside of that integral formula here. The integral symbol used to be an s, uppercase s, but has been stretched through time and nowadays it's just a different symbol. It looks like an s but it's stretched. Alright, so this would be then the antiderivative at point 1 minus the antiderivative at point 0. So antiderivatives at point 1. So first of all, our antiderivatives derivatives here, this more specifically it would be x to the power of 5 over 5. So this is 1 to the power 5 over 5, plus, well, minus, right, because of the cosine of 1. This is f of 1. We still have to do f of 0. So f of 0, if x is 0 here, that's 0. 0 to the power of 5 over 5, that's 0, right? Minus cosine of 0. So cosine of 0 here will be 1. So let's put the values in. Now, it's important to notice here that those trigonometric functions, they, they will accept numbers here as radians, not as degrees. So for example, cosine of 0, well, it doesn't matter, right? 0 degrees or 0 radians, cosine of 0 would be 1. So here, negative 1, because there's a negative up front. This one here, cosine of 1, using your calculator, you would get something around 0 0.5403 and yeah, and it still keeps going, 0 to something. All right, this 1 to the power 5, that's 1 over 5, 0 0.2. This second one here is negative and this is negative, so everything here will turn to the opposite sign and this is 0. So basically, I will round a bit here, but it's just to show you the procedures. In your calculator, just keep the whole numbers. So we would have then 0 0.2 minus 0 0.054. So that would be negative 0 0.340. And it would keep going. I'm just rounding to three significant figures. But remember, keep those in your calculators. Use the answer button. Okay, so you don't round before your final answer. Only round at the end. Okay. All right, so um, minus, minus 1, plus 1. So at the end, and that would be around 0 0.660. That is the proper rounding at the end using your calculator. Using your calculator, you're going to get something around 0 0.65969, right? And um, 596, then you're going to round up to, six, to um, 60. And I think that's basically it. I could do more examples, but the whole idea of the fundamental theorem of calculus is applying the antiderivative with the integral and being able to calculate areas with those.